Madam Chairman, distinguished delegates of the Fourth Committee, I am greatly honored to address you in this respected forum and to convey to you the greetings and the gratitude of the government and people of Belize. We thank you for agreeing to hear the case of our small country, and we are confident that you will not turn your backs on us in our hour of need. We in Belize regard this time as a historic moment that will help to decide whether Belize shall be free or whether we shall be condemned to choose between an indefinite prolongation of colonialism on one hand or dismember and the imposition of a new colonialism on the other. We are heartened by the progress we have witnessed at the United Nations, where the ranks of member nations continue to swell with the admission of newly independent nations that yesterday were in a position we are in today. We welcome this development, and I take this opportunity to congratulate the distinguished representatives of Cape Verde, Sao Tome, and Principe, Mozambique, and Papua New Guinea. We wish the peoples of these sovereign states increased development, peace, and prosperity. Madam Chairman, the people of Belize have for many years looked to the United Nations with hope. Indeed, the United Nations helped to inspire the birth of the independence movement in Belize 25 years ago. Later, in 1960, we were greatly encouraged by the historic declaration on the granting of independence to colonial countries and peoples, Resolution 1514. And soon after this, the British assured us that our country could become independent whenever it so desired. Our struggle for independence was happily conducted peacefully. And in 1964, we implemented a new constitution that gave the elected representatives of the people full control over the internal affairs of Belize. Defense and external affairs remained the responsibility of the British government. That constitution, like similar ones applied in other colonial territories, was meant to last a very short time, three or four years at most. It was to be merely one other step, the last one, before the attainment of full independence. And yet, 12 years later, Belize remains a colony, denied its right to independence by one lingering obstacle, fear for our survival after independence, a fear engendered by the unfounded and unjust claim of Guatemala to the territory of Belize, and its thinly veiled threats to pursue this claim by force if necessary. This fear of military action on the part of Guatemala is a very real fear, a fear based on substantial grounds, a fear fueled on several occasions by certain Guatemalan military movements near our borders. The Belize government, conscious of and confident in the British commitment to defend Belize, continues to welcome whatever level of British military presence in Belize that is necessary for our adequate defense. It is therefore with my government's full knowledge and consent, and indeed at its request, that there has been a temporary British reinforcement in Belize, a reinforcement undertaken in response only to recent military moves on Guatemala's part aimed at intimidating Belize. We in Belize, as well as an increasing number of the world's nations, find it difficult to understand the basis of Guatemala's anachristic claim to Belize. Guatemala claims to be the inheritor of Spanish colonialism, although Spain never exercised effective jurisdiction over the territory. Guatemala, for her part, admits that she has never occupied nor administered the territory of Belize before or after her independence from Spain. Belize has never been a part of Guatemala. Before Guatemala became an independent country, 
believes existed as a distinct reality within its present boundaries. The territory of Belize has remained inviolate since at least 1798, when the last Spaniard attack on the settlement was repulsed. Indeed, the present boundaries were recognized and defined in a treaty of 1859 between Britain and Guatemala. Eighty years later, however, Guatemala lay claim to the territory of Belize on the ground that a clause in that boundary treaty had not been complied with. That clause called on both parties conjointly to use their best efforts to build what was described as a cart road between Guatemala City and the Atlantic coast. The road was never built, and after 80 years, Guatemala claimed that the non-compliance of this joint responsibility caused the entire treaty to lapse, and that therefore, the entire territory of Belize belonged to Guatemala. The Guatemalan claim is in fact precisely what it appears to be, entirely fictitious, entirely unfounded, entirely unjust. But I should like to stress that, absurd as Guatemala's claim might be, the threat of a new colonialism represents a frightening reality that is having harsh consequences on the people of Belize. Let us never forget that we are talking about more than just a piece of territory, a piece of land. We are talking about a people who constitute a distinct nation, but who are prevented from exercising their right to independence for which they have struggled for 25 years. For the Belizean people, the right of self-determination is not an empty claim without the substance of history or present reality. We have for centuries been a distinct and separate people, living on the American continent and identified by our historical development and our cultural, political and economic growth. We are a people with a rightful claim to the land on which for centuries we have lived and worked. And when we consider the attributes of a nation, Belize has them all. We have a distinct national personality, a blend of multiracial origins and various cultures of our history. The population of Belize closely parallels that of the nations of the Caribbean community. We are predominantly of African descent, with a rich mixture of indigenous Maya, Mestizo, Carib, Asian, and others, who live together in peace and harmony. No mean achievement in this world of racial turmoil. We have no desire to become a minority living at a disadvantage among a majority whose way of life is foreign to us. Let the people of Belize remain a nation in waiting no longer. In this, the year of the 15th anniversary of the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples, let not a people who have struggled for national independence for 25 years and who have been self-governing for 12 years be condemned to further unnecessary delay in achieving their just goal. Let Belize live, let her maintain her territory intact, and let her be sovereign and independent, able to contribute to the development of the world as a full member of the United Nations. Madam Chairman, distinguished delegates, I thank you again for affording Belize the opportunity to address you. Thank you very much.